All right, you guys. So welcome into week two of Lose 12 Pounds in Six Weeks. I am excited to kind of just do a quick recap, and then we're going to check in with you guys just to see how week one went for you. But in a nutshell, we hopefully established your total energy expenditure number and your daily calorie ceiling numbers. So hopefully you guys have an idea of like what types of calories you should be having each week to reach your goal. We got into the calorie density approach, and we even provided a meal plan as your guide. And we're going to be building off that meal plan as we keep going as well. Uh, lots of ways to use that meal plan so you can change it up. Uh, we're going to be getting into all that eventually here. We started to explore intermittent fasting right off the bat. We're going to go even deeper this week with that. So I'm really excited. And then box breathing to reduce your stress. Uh, this is super important. Each week from this point forward, we're going to really hammer on this because if we're in a stressful state, mostly throughout the day, it's going to be a very big challenge to lose weight, actually. So we really want to combat this. All right. And so I just want to do a quick check-in. On a scale of one to 10, how did week one go for everybody? I would say it went really well. Yeah, it went good. About a seven. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I would say that too. Okay. The whole idea of the calories, counting the calories and making sure you stayed under your number, that was a little overwhelming at first, but it's getting easier. Yeah, totally. Especially if you've never done this, Laura, to like this extent, it's really, it does take a bit of practice and getting used to it. We're just getting started, Wendy. So perfect timing. <laughs> your microphone. Oh, can oh, you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Trent. Yep, it's yep. just that I'm on safe driving mode. I don't know how to. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know how to make it stop doing that, but it went really well for me. I would say like a 10. Oh, awesome. I was really happy with my results when I weighed this morning. Oh, excellent. That's great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Wendy, we were just checking in really quick on a scale of one to 10. How did week one go for you? Just out of curiosity. I would say close to a 10. Awesome. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So some sevens, some tens, really good. <laughs> Excellent, you guys. Well, nice. hopefully we're going to reinforce some of these ideas that we learned in week one and go even deeper in week two for you here. Because basically what I have planned for week two is we are going to get in to you are the creator to the next level. I want you guys to know exactly what is creating your results, actually, so you can get out ahead of it and really get control of your life here. And I want to jump in to the next level of your calorie approach, which is our macro approach is what it's called. This is a little bit more hardcore. The calorie density approach is much easier to follow, but this is like one to one. So like if you want to guarantee your results, the macro approach is very effective in doing so. So we're going to get into that today. And then we're going to go into intermittent fasting to the next level. And we're also going to get into a bit of what I call cycles. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to go into that more next week. But cycles are super important to understand. And I want you guys to start to just, you know, get some of this information to start applying it right away. So let's jump right in. So you guys may have seen this video in our week two module. If not, don't worry, you can go back to it and check it out. But truly your inner world creates your outer world. And we do this via our attention, energy, and focus. And then physically via the thoughts we're having, the feelings we're having, and the actions we're taking. And as I mentioned, we're going to go really, really deep into this so that you really realize like what is creating your results here. So I want to use this example that you are mentally molding and sculpting your life on the screen of your imagination, 24-7, 365. So in other words, whatever you're thinking about and you're visualizing and you're processing on the screen of your imagination and mind here, that is what is coming about in your life and reality. And a lot of people just unconsciously think about things and not really necessarily do it deliberately the way we're going to start to do starting in week two here. And so my first question for you guys, and this is something to ponder this week, is what are you sculpting right now? Like truly, what is going on up here in your life? <laughs> and this will apply in all areas. So although we're really heavily focused on health, what's funny about the human being here is there's lots of facets of our life. There's health, there's relationships, there's finances, there's careers, there's businesses, there's all sorts of stuff. So however we feel and however we're thinking about any area of our life is going to contribute to how you are showing up actually. And we're going to get into this because 
we want to start to pay attention to what we're creating on a daily basis. There's either a negative creation or a positive creation. Okay. And this is basically an example. Like if you're focused on a lot of the problems in your life or the circumstances that you don't desire, and they are your reality right now, this is what most people do by default because they don't know that they're actually creating their life and reality here. They just see what's going on in their life, accept it for, oh, life sucks. And then they just live from that vantage point. Well, we're, we're going to get way out ahead of this like never before as we keep going here. And I really want you guys to, I want to introduce this idea to you on week two here so you can start running with it. Okay. So the idea here is, are you creating more injury and disease in your body? More doubt and worry? Are you a slave to the scale? Are you sad and unhappy? Not enough time or money. So this relates to all areas of your life, actually. If you're unhappy at your job, if you're unhappy in a relationship, if you're, you know, all areas, don't have enough money in the bank, you're going to bring that energy with you everywhere else you go. And if it's survival energy, it's going to lock down your fat stores, actually. And it's going to be counterproductive, in other words, for what we're doing. So the idea here is, is it negative or is it positive? And this is, these are the opposites, right? Am I creating more he healing and health in my body instead of disease and injury? Am I calm and relaxed instead of worried and fearful and doubtful? The scale is old news, right? It really truly is. We're going to get into that. Am I happy and grateful for everything going on? And I have more than enough time and money, right? So these are like the opposite ideas. And you guys can go back through these slides just to like take a screenshot if you want to and really contemplate this, these ideas. Like what side are you more on throughout the day? Okay. But this is really what this comes down to is positive energy is it refills you. It's creative. It's calm. Nothing to worry about, right? Negative energy is destructive. It's survival mode. It's literally fight, flight, or freeze mode. And your body is reacting and responding like it's trying to save its life. And again, it locks down your fat stores. It prevents you from actually utilizing fat as energy. And not only that, it's actually degrading and breaking down the cells of your body. This type of energy really, truly is destructive energy. We want to start to understand how it actually feels so that we'll know when we're in this type of energy for ourselves. So it includes all of these things and more, but these are like the main ones, doubtful, worried, fearful, anxious, sad and depressed. You're procrastinating. You're not interested. It's physically draining your life force energy. Like it's just, it just feels negative. Okay. Creative energy is the opposite. You're excited about what you're doing. You're inspired. You're passionate. You're invigorated. You've got nothing to worry about, in other words. You're joyful. You're happy. It's adventurous. You're curious. It's charging you up, right? It's the exact opposite state. We want to start to get over here way more often. We want to be excited for the creation that we're creating. You guys are losing 12 pounds in six weeks. I got news for you. And whether or not you've lost any weight yet, it doesn't even matter. Because when you get into this, it's going to come off like, like you've never happened in your life before. I promise you. Okay. So, so stay with me here. We're just getting into the good stuff here. I want to explain what's happening for most people. You start off with a circumstance in your life. Okay. Whether or not the scale says something, whether or not you have a disease or an injury in the body, whether or not, and this applies to all areas of life, actually, by the way, whether or not you have not a lot of money or you hate your job or whatever's going on. The circumstance is just a circumstance. It doesn't start to impact our life until we start thinking about it. So what happens is there's a circumstance in our life, right? Uh, death in the family, whatever's going on, right? Well, you start to think about what happens, and now you're starting to process on the screen of your mind about that circumstance. So in other words, you're starting to give meaning to the circumstance in your life. Well, the thoughts that you're, that you're thinking about the circumstance are going to create an emotion. It's going to cause you to feel a certain way about that circumstance. And that emotion is going to trigger how you actually show up and your actions based on that circumstance. And then how you show up creates an actual physical result that you see. And then the result produces and it validates the circumstance. So this is the behavioral cycle that we all follow. One for one, you can actually see 
that this is all related. And if you happen to change, so you can't change the circumstance right now, but what you can change is the thought about it. So if you start to change the way you're thinking about the circumstance, guess what ends up happening? You start to feel differently about it. You start to show up differently and act differently about it. You create a new result around it and it changes the circumstance. Okay. So I want to just give a quick example and then we're going to check in, but let's just say the circumstance is the scale says 200 pounds. And then you have a thought that's like, what the hell? I ate good. I worked out this week. I'm supposed to be down a few pounds, right? This is super common. And I guarantee you guys are going to think like this at some point. <laughs> Even I still think like this randomly. And so the idea is, how does that thought, how do those thoughts make you feel? Well, it's crappy. It makes you feel unhappy. You're disappointed. You're frustrated. You're like, oh my God, all this work and effort. It's, it's not a good feeling. It's negative. It's actually survival mode energy. And so what happens is the feeling that you feel causes you to show up and take action in the directly proportionate man. So what do you do? You complain that the scale still says 200 pounds. You might give up because you tried so hard that week and then still didn't get any results. You might just, you know, eat whatever you want, eat chips, fall off the wagon, so to speak. Or you might just watch TV or find pleasure in different ways because the pleasure of you losing five pounds didn't happen this week, right? So we're going to get into motivation and pain and pleasure principle next week, actually, because that helps you reinforce your motivation as well. But I just want to paint the picture of what's actually happening for you guys here. And then what happens is the result, the scale will continue to say 200 pounds and it'll verify and validate the circumstance. So in order to interrupt this cycle for yourself, we need to start thinking differently. Literally, our thoughts determine our results over time. So it's not just going to happen right away. Like you're not just going to think, oh, okay, well, I weigh 195, but you know, it happens right away. No, you got to process the thought on the screen of your mind enough, and then it will eventually become a result. So here's a better thought you could think in that same example. Okay. Oh, well, you know what? It says 200. Well, that's okay. The scale is old news anyways, right? Well, you know what? Actually, this is literally what's happening. Muscle weighs more than fat. So I likely lost some fat and gained some muscle. There you go. So it just simply says 200 pounds. So my body composition's changing, but the scale just doesn't reflect that. It's not super accurate actually as to what's happening. Another one is I've been drinking way more water lately. So this is likely water weight that's sitting here. Maybe I, I didn't put this on here, but maybe there, I didn't have a bowel movement yet. <laughs> and that's likely what's happening too. Another better serving thought is I know I went over my calories a couple of days this week. I'm going to dial it in even better next week, right? So these are all productive thoughts that will lead to a really great result over time. Before we go any further, the idea is it doesn't matter what you have been sculpting up until now. The question is, what do you want to sculpt? What do you want to create? So if you've been creating lots of injury and disease in the body, lots of you know feeling overweight in, in your body, and that's been like your habit, a way of thinking up until now. Well, now this is our chance to start to create something new. We're going to create a new sculpture. I'm going to create a fit body that is next level. And that's what we're going to get into here. This right here is actually my example. I want to show you guys this. Okay. So what do you want to sculpt visually? This guy is, his name is Massimo Brunaccioni. <laughs> He's got a super cool name. He is a vegan bodybuilder, been vegan bodybuilding for over 20 years. This is my vision for myself. I'm not going to probably look exactly like this guy, but in my mind, this is where I'm striving to be. So I often tell people I'm going to look like the rock, but I don't want to be as big as the rock is. I really honestly want to be like this guy. He's a little bit bigger. I want to be slightly smaller than this guy, but that's visually who I kind of imagine when I'm thinking about my own creation here. So then what do you want to sculpt metrically? This is literally mine, you guys. I want to weigh 165. I want to bench 275 to 300, squat 300 to 325, deadlift 400 to 425. Cause I'm ultimately, and maybe you guys have seen this, but I'm going for the thousand pound club, which is basically the total of your bench, squat and deadlift and powerlifting. So I want to hit the thousand pound club by the end of the year. And that's my goal. And so this is who I visualize like my, I don't look like him right now. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. So every time I visualize, I picture this body, my head is on it, 
And then these are the results that I'm actually producing in my life. This is how I'm performing in the gym. You guys, if you're, you don't have to do it exactly like I am. I just want to show you what my visualization actually looks like. You can tie to any metric. If you want to have a certain size waist, if you want to wear a certain size clothing, if you want to weigh a certain amount of weight, right? Like all these are metrics that you can tie to. So this is what I want you guys to get into for week two. It's basically this. We're going to practice visualizing what exactly your vision, goal, dream, or desire actually looks like. Like Michelangelo created the Sistine Chapel in his mind first and then started painting it, we want to tie to this idea right now. And we want to do this on a regular basis. We want to get intimately connected with that version of yourself because that's actually who you're creating. Does that whole idea make sense? And any questions on that yet? Everything makes sense. I don't have any questions. Awesome, Ange. Awesome, Ange. Everyone else good? Th thumbs up if we're good on that? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I just want to check in. So we're really going to practice this on a regular basis. And really, that's kind of the only real homework you have this week is this visualization practice. Because you need to intimately know what that version of you looks like. And you're going to become him or her in your mind starting this week. Okay. So that before we go any further, I just want to make that super clear. Okay. Number two for week two here is the macro approach to eating. If you guys didn't watch this video, I highly recommend you watch it. It's only a few minutes and it'll highlight this, this principle and idea here for you. Generally speaking, the idea is protein and carbohydrates weigh a lot less calories than alcohol and fat. And so alcohol is not necessarily bad. Like Trent and I have had these conversations a lot. You know, sometimes it's nice to just wind down and have a glass of wine, glass of beer, whatever that looks like for you. But knowing this principle and knowing what type of body you're creating, you're going to start to think about things a little bit differently. You're going to start to question, well, do I really want to put almost two times the amount of calories in my body than what I could be putting in my body and fueling my body with this source versus this source, in other words, right? That is more than two times. It's interesting because a lot of people try a lot of different types of diets. And one diet in particular is low carb, high fat, and high protein, which a lot of people go to. Well, I've got news for you. I've had a lot of experience with this. That diet does work, but typically only temporarily because your carbohydrates are your primary fuel source, actually. So if you take them out of your life, you're going to be miserable. You will not have a lot of energy over time. And you will be really struggling going uphill, trying to reach your goals, actually. On a cycle, that's not necessarily a terrible approach. You could eat like that if you wanted to. But I, I try to work and operate as efficiently as possible. And that's what I teach all my people. So I simply just say, stick with the protein carbohydrates and then lower fat. And that's the most economical, efficient approach. It's the most balanced. It happens to be the most natural as well in nature. And truly, it is basically the ideal approach here. And so if you take this approach, what you're going to learn in that, that video that I shared is that 80% of your calories, again, the 80-20 rule lives here, comes from protein and carbohydrates. 20% of calories will come from, I didn't say this in the video, but from fat and alcohol, if you chose to. The idea here is truly not all calories are created equally. And I want to just give this example and what I shared in the video is let's just say your daily calorie ceiling is a thousand calories. Well, this is actually what it translates to. So it'd be 150 grams of carbohydrates, 50 grams of protein, and 22 grams of fat. So what does this actually mean here, right? Well, if you're actually tracking every food you're eating and you use this as your guide, then let's just say you had a fruit smoothie for breakfast or for meal one, let's say, and it was maybe 40 or 50 grams of carbohydrates. Okay. Maybe a little bit of protein, not a lot of fat either. Well, let's just say you have another high carbohydrate meal later on, and it's another 50, 60 grams of carbohydrates. And then again, low protein, low fat. Well, let's just say by the end of your day or getting towards the end of the day, let's just say you've gotten about 120, 130 grams of carbohydrates in there, maybe only 10 or 20 grams of protein and maybe 10 grams of fat, let's say. Well, at the end of the day, you could have like a protein shake if you wanted to, which is like 30 grams of protein to get you to 50. 
you could have a little bit of fat at the end of the day. It's almost like the Weight Watchers approach where it's like, oh, I can have, I can squeeze in a few more grams of whatever it is that I need to hit. So if you use this as a guide, it's literally one to one. And if you reach these numbers every single day, you will, if your T number is 2000, you will lose two pounds at the end of the week. Now, whether or not the scale says that, that's the other idea I want to get into is there's lots of factors. The scale is not is not one-to-one, actually. The scale is just a, a, a tool we can use to generally see which direction we're going in. But let's just say you drank a gallon extra water that day. Well, that's going to show up on the scale. Let's just say you did work out a lot and you built a lot of muscle that week. Well, that muscle weighs more than fat. So the scale is not necessarily the most accurate tool, in other words. All we care about is 3,500 calories equals one pound. So you will have lost two pounds at the end of this week, if you follow this exact macronutrient ratio here. Actors and actresses follow this. High-performing athletes, Olympians follow this because they need to know they're creating the body that they intend to create. So this is the most accurate way to do it, but you have to measure each meal. You have to measure it, weigh it out, and actually consume the actual amount of grams. So again, it's going to take a little bit more effort. You got to prioritize this a little bit more. It may not be for you. But I at least want to share this with you so that you can actually guarantee results if you choose to do so. Okay, so one of the last items I want to talk about today is the next level of intermittent fasting. This is personally what I tap into when I really want to just get exponentially fast results. And this chart is in my book, 13 hours roughly, like so in other words, 12 hours of fasting is going to start to open up your fat stores. As long as you're in a calm, relaxed state, (laughs) it's going to start to naturally open up your fat stores to be starting to use as energy. Well, it just doesn't open them all the way. There's a ratio that's occurring here. So at hour 13, right around there, if you happen to be super active, this happens at like hour 10, actually. You can actually adjust this according to activity levels. But the idea here is at hour 13, 90% of our energy is being used from glycogen, and 10% is coming from our fat stores. Every hour on the hour, it opens up more fat stores, more and more and more, because your body's trying to just preserve its glycogen stores as long as it can. And then by hour like 22-ish, depending on your activity levels, now it's really opening up. And that's, if you get to 24 hours, you start to enter into ketosis. If you guys have ever heard of the keto diet, right? Well, we don't want to necessarily get into ketosis. You can, but we just want to leverage this principle for our lifestyle and to reach our goals more effectively. So here's an example. If your T number was 2000, every hour on the hour, you burn a hundred calories roughly. Uh, During sleep, you burn about 60 calories sleeping, like just literally breathing. You're just burning 60 calories an hour. Well, when you're active and you're awake and you're conscious, you're burning roughly about a hundred calories. If you're a little bit more active during that hour, obviously this is going to go up. So what happens is for the first 12 hours, pretty much zero calories are coming from fat. You're using glycogen as your energy source. Well, beginning at hours 13 through 16, if you did the math, the first hour would be 10 calories coming from fat. 20 calories the next hour coming from fat and 30 calories the next hour. 10 plus 20 plus 30 equals 60 calories coming from fat. This is with no activity. Like if you're just just living, well, same thing. I'll just say you're working, you decide not to eat, you're just drinking lots of water and you can keep your fast going till 17 to 19 hours. Well, if you notice, it starts to get more exponential. So hours 17 to 19, now you're burning 40, 50 and 60 calories, right? ends up being 150 calories. It keeps going, becomes more exponential. Let's just say you can go 20, 21, 22 hours. Now you've successfully burned 240 calories. When you add all this up, the total is 450 calories from your body fat. So I want to give you another example really quick. Every hour on the hour, you're burning 100 calories. First 12 hours, zero calories. Same thing, hours 13 through 16. But what happens if you squeeze the workout in and it was a 60 minute workout? You burn 500 calories during that workout. Well, about 300 calories of that workout would have been from body fat. So now you're taking the reins here a little bit better. And now let's just say you don't have to fast as long and you just squeeze a workout in. You just got close to the same amount of results than a five hour more fast, six hour more fast or whatever that looks like. If you play around with this, 
you could start to burn exponentially more body fat on a daily basis. So let's just say you were able to fast even up to 18 hours a day, you're going to be burning right 100 or so calories from body fat alone if you squeeze in a workout there. You'd be burning 400 calories from body fat if you were able to extend it to 20, 22 hours and you squeeze in a workout. Boom, now it's five, 600 calories from body fat is being burned on that day. You add this up over time and now this really gets exponential. I wanna share with you guys really quick one of my clients and what he did. One of my clients, he had a T number of 3000 and we were working with him to get him, he wanted to lose weight as quickly as possible. So I wanted to share what he did just so you guys have an idea. He decided he was gonna work out in the morning and or in the evening every single day for at least a half an hour to an hour at each session. So if you do the math on that, it's gonna be at least 500 calories he's burning and then maybe even more. He would sometimes work out for two hours a day, an hour in the morning, hour in the evening. It's a thousand calories that you're expending during those two hours, right? He also decided he was only going to eat 600 to a thousand calories a day. I do not recommend you do this, but he actually did this for a few months and ended up losing five to six pounds a week. He ended up losing 80 pounds in four months. Now, I do not say this so that you guys go out there and do this. I'm just letting you know what is actually possible. And I told him actually not to do that for the record. <laughs> I was working with him one-on-one, but he really, he was the eye on the prize. The vision was just dead connected. And he wanted to weigh his body weight when he came out of high school, when he graduated, which was for him, it was 220. So he was 300, or just over 300 pounds when he started and he got down to 220 and he did it in four months. So just to give an idea of how you can play around with these ideas, I would not recommend that extreme, but for you guys, if you really wanted to, you get into a cycle like this for like this next couple of weeks, if you wanted to, and you can say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try that. I'm going to work out in the morning and the evening, and then I'm just going to set myself up for success here. Right? So I want to introduce these to you so you can actually start playing around with these ideas. And really, when you really get this and you really connect to that vision, the vision is going to start to drive you. It's going to start to motivate. You're going to build in self-motivation from that vision. And actually, the very last thing I want to share, um, it's, it's just around cycles here. I love to operate in cycles because they're not permanent. <laughs> so literally, like this week, week two is a cycle if you, want it, if you want it to be. So in week two, you can enter into a purely fat-burning cycle, a weight loss cycle if you wanted to. Like Maybe the fat-burning aspect is more or, or less like fasting and working out. Weight loss overall is calorie intake. So you lower your calories extremely this week. Fasting, again, you could just solely focus on fasting if you wanted to and maybe say, hey, I'm going to fast four days this week, right? Instead of one or two, let's say. And that's going to be my cycle for this week. Muscle building, endurance building, there's all sorts of types of cycles you can get into. Detoxing, healing your body. All of these ideas, we're going to start to get in more depth with each one because they will serve you infinitely better. If you get injured, for instance, you're going to want to get into a healing cycle as quickly as possible. What most people do though, is they get injured and they get themselves into an injury cycle and they're flowing lots of energy to their injury and it's perpetuating their injury, right? Oh, I've got a bad back eventually. Or I've got a bad knee and they've created a bad injury in their body permanently. Well, if they simply got more into a healing cycle for themselves, your body innately wants to heal anyways, right? When you get cut, let me come back to here. When you get cut, do you do anything to heal your body? right? Your body just does it. It's sending automatically, unconsciously sends red blood cells to go repair the cut. You know, your hair grows, your skin cells regrow. Like everything's always regrowing and regenerating and creating as long as you allow it. And just to come completely full circle for you guys today is if you're in survival destructive mode, it's very hard for your body to bring you back to wellness. If you're in that mode, mostly throughout the day. So this is going to become very prevalent for you as we keep going here. But how do all of these ideas sound? I want to kind of just check in, see if you guys have any questions on what we talked about here today. I think it all sounds good. I mean, about intermittent fasting. So, I mean, just for myself personally, I've been doing it every day. Um, yes, that's awesome. Is it, is your, does there come a point in time where your body gets used to it and it's not as effective? Yeah, great question, Laura. Yes. 
So yeah, there's an idea in, in general, right? Our bodies are habitual. So as soon as you develop a habit, it makes it more efficient. It's almost, I liken it to you're setting cruise control on your car, actually, right? It's using a lot less energy, actually, because your body is innately trying to preserve its energy and work super efficiently. So eventually, as you as intermittent fasting becomes a habit, yeah, you're going to want to play around with it and to start to trick it and to create a different a habit for yourself, actually, or keep your body guessing, in other words. Even if you do make a habit of it, it still produces amazing results. So intermittent fasting is one of those things where honestly, the the focus I would suggest for you is to get better at relaxing into it. And because a lot of times it causes survival mode energy if you're in it and it's like kind of frustrating and that type of thing. I'm sure you've experienced this a little bit, but what happens is right. If you, let's just say like you're starving that day and now like it sets your, your body into survival mode, like, oh God, I'm really hungry. Well, the, the reality is if you get those like hunger pains in your stomach, what happens again, your body's habitual. So let's just say you're used to eating breakfast at a certain time, let's say. And as soon as that time passes, your body's like, well, what the heck? Where's our food? It's going to start to send those signals to, and, and creates hunger pains in your stomach. Well, if you bypass them, you just drink water through them. You're now creating a new habit for yourself. And over a few days, it starts to go away, actually. Like it won't start, it won't trigger that, that same reaction any longer. And then if you do this for a few weeks, let's say, what ends up happening is you get a lot more familiar, a lot more comfortable fasting a lot longer. And then as you're mentioning, if you get very comfortable doing it, you'd what I'd recommend at that point, then you can start to change it around. You can extend the fast. At that point, I would say like go for a 24 hour fast if you can and really explore that uh, just to keep your body constantly shifting and using energy in different ways. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yes, my pleasure. Excellent, you guys. So really just to come full circle here, this is kind of the homework for week two here. I want you to practice being in more calm, creative energy. And what's really cool about this, and we're going to get way more into this next week, but you can do this in all the areas of your life. One of the best ways to do this is through gratitude. A lot of times when there's a lot of problems going on in your life, we're not, we're in the opposite state of gratitude, actually. We're in like, what the heck? Like we're in victim mode and like things are happening to us, right? Well, that energy is survival energy. It's keeping you stuck. It's counterproductive for losing weight, actually. So I would love to challenge you guys to look at each area of your life and really rate yourself on how well you're creating a great result in that area. And, and maybe it's the opposite right now. Like maybe it's a destructive result in that area of your life. I want to challenge you to find the good in it. How can you be grateful for that area of your life, actually? So even if you have like a job that you don't love, what are aspects of the job that you do love? What are aspects of the job that are blessing you right now? A job would be giving you maybe insurance, a lot of money, a regular paycheck, let's say, right? When I went from my job to entrepreneurship, that was one of the biggest things. I don't have a regular paycheck anymore, <laughs> right? You have to kind of create that. So that's a blessing. Like when I was at my job, I didn't, I took that for granted. Like, Hey, you got a paycheck every couple of weeks, right? Well, it's one of those things where you just lose sight of it. We're not really paying attention. And again, how you think about any area of your life is going to cause you to feel a certain way. How you feel is going to cause you to show up a certain way. So we want to start to get out ahead of this, start thinking way better in each area of our life. And truly we want to be grateful and happy that we're alive actually. So I'm going to get, I'll bring you back guys all the way back and reset you. Do you or do you not have everything you need right now in this moment, right? Literally, I woke up today. It's a brand new day. doesn't matter if it's raining or sun shining. doesn't matter. Brand new day to create anything we want to create today. We're going to have an amazing call today. I think we did have an amazing call today. <laughs> I love seeing your guys' face. I love like what we're creating here together. I can't wait to help you, know, you guys reach your goals. I can't wait to help the world just become a better version of themselves. I can't wait to do all that. So what we're creating here is exciting. It's awesome. It's what the world needs, right? And, and so when you wake up feeling grateful, I'm grateful for every breath I take, right? We never have to worry about where your next thing of oxygen is going to come from. It's all, all over the place. Like we, we're so blessed. We have oxygen that the trees provide us all day long, everywhere in the, in the whole world. How cool is that? Water. Endless water, how awesome comes from your fridge or bottled water, wherever you're getting it from. It's a blessing, right? Everything you have, you have, you have enough right now to create anything you desire because you create via what's on the screen of your imagination. It's your thoughts that are creating a reality. Actually, 
A lot of people don't realize this. And they just let their their thoughts become a chronic, debilitating way of thinking. And it results into a chronic, debilitating state of reality for themselves. Well, you and I, we're all going to be understanding that, oh, you know what? No, I could choose a new thought. I could choose to create anything I want to create from this point forward, in other words. That's what I want you guys to do is really pay attention to the thoughts you're having in each area of your life. And then specifically for health, I want you guys to practice just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Visualize your Massimo Brunaccioni <laughs> on the screen of your mind. <laughs> what does he or she look like for you? Oh, yeah, I forgot. that. Yeah, we want to read chapters three and four in our book. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> uh, if you have time. I understand everyone's busy. But I want to share this one more time. Look at the detail Michelangelo had when he was sculpting Moses here. Look at the level of detail. Now, literally, we want to sculpt our creation with this in mind. The level of detail. Like, what, what are your abs going to look like, right? What, what are you going to look like here? How is your dress or your shirt going to fit? How are you going to look? How are you going to show up? Right? What type of confidence are you going to have as that version of yourself? I really want to point this out because this is to the level we want to visualize ourselves. Okay. And then, of course, like what are the metrics around that as well? Right. What size clothing are you wearing? What, you know, what do you look like? What does your hair look like? All these things. And just visualize. And I want you to almost daydream and imagine like a kid would, like what that looks like to be that version of yourself. Like a kid trying to become an astronaut. They're actually playing around as an astronaut in their mind, right? Well, guess what? I'm I'm throwing around weights in my mind. And I'm like, oh man, I'm it's easy. It's it's nothing, you know, you know, all that stuff. So mentally rehearse this for yourself the best you can for just a few minutes a day. That's all I want you to do for this week. And then if you want to explore like the macro approach to eating, you can measure out stuff for yourself this week. Uh, I'm going to be recording videos on that though coming in week three, um, just so you can know exactly what that looks like as well, if you want to go in that direction. Otherwise, just stick to the calorie density approach, stick to your calorie ceiling, and you're going to produce unbelievably awesome results as we keep going here. So how does that sound? Any other questions? Anything else for me before we wrap up today? Tony, do you feel that the um, macros work better than the calories? I know it's a little bit more work, but I know a lot of people that had transitioned to doing that. Yes. Uh, Wendy, great question. Um, yes, they actually do work a little bit better. Um, so just so you know, like everything we're doing, there's a lot more detail to it. So I'm just kind of introducing the concepts uh, just so you guys get the overall general idea of it. But really, when you start to see what's happening, right, let's just say you're having a lot of fruit, a lot of vegetables, a lot of whole grains, and uh, you know certain things, what you're going to find is maybe it's not as much protein that you're taking in and you're trying to build muscle. It's going to be a little bit difficult. That's actually what I ran into. Uh, especially being uh, all plant-based, I actually haven't eaten meat in over eight years. And so uh, eating meat, easy to get protein from that. But what I had to start to do is I had to start eating more tofu and beans and peas and potatoes actually have protein in them too. But um, certain plant foods have a lot more protein in them. Lentils, all those you know whole grains have a lot of protein. So you have to be mindful that if you're really putting on a lot of muscle, but the idea is if you're looking and the only the, the only recommendation and suggestion I have is if you're trying to get a very ripped six pack or you're trying to build a lot of muscle, then the macro approach is very effective because okay. it's, it's one to one actually. Yeah. So in, in other words, if I know I'm going to hit, so I actually, my calories, I have to hit at least 80 grams of protein a day. So for me to build sufficient muscle, that's kind of what I landed on because 50 is not enough for the type of muscle I'm trying to put on. Everyone's going to be a bit different though. So the idea is if you want one-to-one -one results and you want to create that six pack, you know, you, you're trying to build a certain amount of strength, then yeah, macro approach is just the best of the best. It's going to take more effort though. Oh yeah. I'm not ready for it. Yeah. I just heard so much about it in the yeah. past and I just never really looked far into it. Yeah. So I was just curious. Yep. We'll talk about it more next week for sure. But a lot of people, what we do is we prep, we'll meal prep specifically and, and actually know exactly how many grams of, of everything is in that particular meal. So now it's, you take the guesswork out of everything. You just prep it. It's in your fridge and then you heat it up and eat it. And it's like, okay, I know I'm taking in, you know, 30 grams of protein or whatever that looks like in that particular meal. So it's very strategic and actors and actresses do this. Well, Olympians do this. Like it's a very strategic approach, but, but again, it depends on your goal, right? Awesome question, Wendy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else? 
Is there anything else you would love to get from me each week? Just want to make sure this is a, a really great experience for you guys. And I think all the information you're giving us is really great, Tony. Awesome. Thank you, Ange. <laughs> Excellent. I agree. Excellent. Would like a daily like email or a daily message to you guys, like a motivational message or something like that? I, I was playing around this idea and I'd love to explore it, but would that be more of a bother to you or would that be helpful for you, do you think? I'll take all the motivation I can get. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Awesome. Well, okay. <laughs> love it. Yeah. So maybe in an email format, just so it's not super bothersome if you're getting text messages and that type of thing. We'll start there this week with that. Uh, just to just to give you a little bit more motivation, if that works. <laughs> I'll give you back a few minutes here. Uh, thank you so much for joining me live. I appreciate you guys so much. Excellent. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Yes. Enjoy the rest of your day and week here. And I'll see you next Wednesday. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.